Hello everyone, 3D Pathfinder here, aka Jason Johnston. Uh, thank you for joining me today. We're going to be going over the JG Maker R1 3D printer that I got to review. Now I've been printing basically non-stop for over a week and I can really say that um, now a little bit of backstory if you're not entirely familiar with the JG Maker that's probably because you're not in the industrial 3D printer market uh, not many people in the hobbyist sector are going out there and spending seventeen thousand dollars on a printer um, and unless you just happen to have that kind of bank but at least I don't but um, I reached out to JG maker about reviewing this particular printer and they said sure and so we arranged I got it um, about eight days ago and I have been basically as you can probably see constantly printing with it putting through its paces and uh, seeing what it's all about now JG Maker, they market this one mainly as a beginner printer, and I have to say it is exactly that, but that's a little misleading because the printer itself actually has some features that you don't typically find on lower end units. I think um, that this one has been on sale um, anywhere from $249 to lower uh, I think it may even be on sale for 189 uh, at, uh, at some I know that they were running a sale on it so they were offering a $50 coupon for a while um, but you can grab this on Amazon and for the price that they're charging for this you really can't go wrong now what you get with this printer is something that's very easy to use. Now, when I took this out of the box and went to set it up, all you basically do is you have to install the, uh, the gantry, of course, and uh, you put on your spool holder and you attach the, the runout sensor and you attach the screen. That's pretty much it. There's not much to it. Um, as far as initial setup, as far as bed leveling and Z offset, well, you don't level the bed on this one. It is 100% automatic bed leveling. So for a beginner, that's fantastic. Now I know that some prefer to have a bed that they can manually tune and adjust to get their, um, you know, their layers perfect, but I have had zero issue whatsoever in bed adhesion or level or anything I don't I don't notice any artifacts in the printing due to an unlevel bed okay so on build quality I want to say it is very robustly built it's very very hefty this is it's very solid machine you're probably hearing my Bamboo Lab printer printing. You're probably hearing the Neptune 4 Plus over there printing. This is printing as well, and I have to tell you that it is absolutely silent. Okay, I when I first started printing with this, I sat at my computer doing whatever. I kept having to look back to make sure that this was actually printing. When I say that you could print with this directly next to wherever you're sitting, sitting I am 100% honest. This is very, very quiet. Now, it's not a speed demon, but the print quality is very good. So let's get the specs out of the way. One, you get a build volume of 230 by 230 by 250. You get a magnetic PEI steel flexible build service, okay? You get upwards of 180 millimeters per second build speed. Realistically, you're not really going to be building at anything at that speed if you want some decent quality, especially on a bed slinger. Uh, most of the things that I've been printing are somewhere between 60 and 150 millimeters. Um, you get your runout sensor. You get belt tensioners for both your Y and your your Y and uh, X axis. And then, look at that. That's one thing that I'm gonna show you in a little bit. But uh, as far as in the package, it comes with a decent amount of, sorry, that's ramping up over there, so I'm sorry about the audio. You get a fairly comparable package. You get a little 250 
gram roll of filament. You get your um, USB 2 cable if you want to connect it um, to your network or something. It doesn't have Wi-Fi. And you get a little... I don't know why this was in there, but there was a little additional, I guess, test spool of some filament. And you get your little scraper right there. Okay, just a little plastic scraper. And then you get some um, glue stick. But like I said, I've had no issues with build adhesion on this whatsoever. And you also get a very good set of angle cutters. And they're actually American made angle cutters. It says right there, made in the USA. I've been using these everything. So you that that's a plus to me. Um, as far as Z offset, I didn't have to do anything. It was perfect right out of the box. Uh, and I immediately started printing. And as you can see, um, yeah, I've been printing a lot. So the first model that printed was this. Um, oh, also, your bed does go up to 100C. Sorry about that. Um, not that you would probably ever need something 100C. So that's a little bit overkill. You do have a capacitive touch uh, screen on here for selecting all your uh, uh, various operations and stuff. It will go up to 260C. So you're, that's be fine for your PLAs and your TPUs and your lower temperature, maybe ASAs. Your pet G's will be fine. I actually did print uh, um, a pet G, but it disappeared i can't find it so um you get your layer thicknesses are down to 0.1 to 0.4 millimeters um and auto bed leveling like i say upwards of 180 millimeters per second print speed and that's it it's a very simple machine but it functions perfectly i've had no issue with this thing at all I've ran several different brands of filament from Elegoo, I've ran Creality Filament, I've ran uh, Giant Arm, I've ran 3D Fuel, and uh, so I have a variety of filaments and even some off-brand filaments that I've run through it, and it's been fine with every one of them. Um, so as far as performance goes, I don't know if you can see some of these models, but these print-in-place flexible ones, the the surface finish on that is perfect. It's flawless. You can see that. So, and that's what I have really been getting. I've printed this. This is in the 3D Fuel print-in-place flexible, printed perfect. Um, printed the Roctopus, as you can see there. This is with some Creality filament. It printed fine. Um, the largest thing that I printed was this, and as you can see, very solid. This is also printed in uh, Creality filament, and this is called a Dragon Scale Vase. And this took about 14 hours, I think, to print, and it is perfect. There are no flaws anywhere on it. So I printed a Christmas ornament there that you can see. I also printed, this is the uh, a fuzzy skin rabbit that I also printed in it with it. And that printed fine. The Benchy printed fine. Everything printed just fine. The only issue that I had was this Doom mask that I was printing. Y'all see that right there. And what was happening was the filament I was using for this, it kept getting tangled. And you can see where one of those tangled caused a layer separation right here as it was under extruding because I had to come in and catch that it was you know uh, bound up and I had to release it but other than that the surface is is great on it so I also printed this anatomically correct half skull as you can see just so that you can get an idea of some of the detail and stuff that this will print like I said it's not fast but and it's printing right now a flexible uh, brontosaur. I think I left the fuzzy skin back on, but it's printing it in uh, acidity tricolor PLA filament right now. And uh, let's see, I'm about 27% complete, and no no layer adhesion problem or no bed adhesion problems. No nothing. I'd even turn the brim off on this because I don't need it. I've had no issue or no reason to use any glue stick with this at all. So. I highly 
recommend this printer for a beginner. Now, it comes with your stock Cura software, which I am a complete Cura noob. So I am learning how to use it basically with this one and my Neptune 4 Plus until get profiles in Orca Slicer until I learn how to build a profile in Orca Slicer. Like I said, I'm still very new. And um, like I'll get the mic close down here. You can't even hear it. I don't know if y'all can, but it is almost virtually silent here. I hear the fans on the Neptune 4 and over here on the Bamboo Lab they completely drown out this printer. Absolutely quiet. Build quality is fantastic. Operation is extremely simple. You, with the 230 by 230 by 250 build volume, that is plenty for any of your beginner uh, needs for a printer. Um, that's fairly standard size in the industry when you get into this class of a uh, printer like really the only things that i would love to see is wi-fi and maybe find a way to load clipper on this thing and run clipper instead of uh it's a marlin machine um that's the firmware that it uses now but i have nothing really bad to say about this printer at all um like i said jg maker sent it out to me to review and uh whether that's the case or not my reputation is based on not by what somebody gives me but the information I give you all so I do recommend this printer and as you can see I have used it almost constantly and everything that I have printed with it has been other than issues outside of the printer's control like getting snagged filament and stuff everything has printed wonderfully as you can see right there get a look at that printed perfect and that that's a that's a big it's a big big uh build there but the detail that i got on the ornament and everything it's fantastic so i highly recommend for anybody looking to get into 3d printing the price that you pay for this is very easily affordable. I think I've even seen it for 189 uh, at some at some outlets right now. Just search JG Maker R1, and um, I'm sure you'll find the best price. Like I said, I know Amazon. There was a $50 coupon for it for a while that dropped it to 199, but I believe I just saw it on sale for 189, which is is fantastic for this machine prints wonderfully you can do your PLAs you can do your lower temperature maybe ASAs ABS maybe I haven't tried um, but pet G prints fine on it um, the silk filaments have printed fine standard filaments have printed fine PLA and stuff like that so I think it's just a win-win for the price the sturdiness of the build the simplicity of it you can't go wrong so I would definitely recommend the JG Maker R1. And even if you're wanting a little additional uh, printer to add to, say, an already uh, growing uh, print farm or something like that, if you don't need speed and you're just looking for something that is very reliable and the print quality is really high, you can't go wrong with this. I mean, the, the, it has been flawless. Even the, and these are all 0.2, you know, layer heights. I haven't tried dropping it down. That's a 0.2 layer height. And getting the fuzzy skin from Cura, wonderful. I mean, it has been doing great. I don't think this one, it's a drunk, oh, stand it up. The uh, Roctopus, I mean, everything, it's got a little bit of stringing on here, but that I had the temperature way too high and I haven't dried this filament in a while. But, um, yeah, everything has printed great. So, go out, check it out. If you know anybody that's wanting to get into 3D printing or if you're looking to get a gift for somebody, even a child, a nephew, a niece, a friend, birth, whatever, 
you really can't go wrong with uh, the JG Maker R1. I highly recommend it, and uh, y'all go check it out. So, I appreciate the support. I got more coming, and uh, stay tuned. I'm still trying to build this channel and bring the best content to y'all as I can. So, stay with me, and remember, be good to yourself. Get into 3D printing, and y'all have a lot of fun. We'll see y'all later.